Hey internets, uh, thanks for watching. I wanted to share the experience of my first pattern solo. Uh, this is my first solo in a rotorcraft helicopter. Um, just a phenomenal, profound experience. Wanted to share it. Um, this was before I had kind of figured out a little bit of how to record better in some of the videos. So the video is a little, uh, well, it is what it is. But I hope you enjoy. Um, I'll talk a little bit more at the end of just kind of what I learned and what uh, was profound about the experience. Uh, anyone out there who's getting close to your solo or had your solo, I'd love to hear from you in the comments um, down at the bottom. And, you know, please uh, love to hear from you. And we'll talk a little bit more at the end. Enjoy. Roger, Lenny, Keys, Copter, you on risk, use caution, wind 0906. Uh, clear to Casey Copter's ramp at my own uh, risk, I will use caution, 824 Tango Fox. Uh, two hundred overcast, temperature 3, 2.1, altimeter 3002, hard to have a localizer when they want you to approach me, so I have much contact, you have no better.
Hey, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the video. A couple of things I just wanted to talk about that were really profound for me. Uh, I've watched a lot of videos about Solo when I was getting ready for mine just to try and understand what to expect. One of the things I saw several people say is don't bring your family, don't bring friends, make it, it's a Solo, make it about you. Um, I had actually the opposite um, experience. My family was there, uh, my two kids were there, they were very well behaved, which was a shock. Um, they did a fantastic job, but um, it actually was really inspiring for me uh, to be there with them. And at one point on a landing, um, I actually was waving. Uh, I saw my kids waving and I waved. And it just really put me at ease knowing that they were there, they were part of the experience. Um, my family's been very supportive. Um, there's nothing easy about learning to fly helicopters. And so having my family there for that moment was really cool. I think it's up to you. Instead of saying don't do it or do it, uh, of course it's up to you and your stress and how you're going to relate to that. But for me it was really awesome to have my family there and I was really grateful that they took the time to come literally watch me fly in circles for an hour. Um, and so that was really, really cool for me. Um, one of the things that jumped out at me was just the total change in the aircraft. Night and day, uh, when I did my first pickup, um, I really had to play with the cyclic. It flew entirely different. And my instructor had been saying, when you pick up, it's gonna feel different about a month before I soloed. When you pick up, it's gonna be different. We went out and did pickup after pickup after pickup. And he told me, it's gonna be different when you solo. Uh, it's gonna be real tail heavy. You're not even gonna recognize how the aircraft's flying. And I remember when I picked it up that first time, I went, wow, I really wish the instructor had said something to prepare me for this moment, because this is totally different. And then I thought back, I'm like, wow, that's pretty much all he's been saying for a month. And, um, you know, it just nothing prepares you for how different the aircraft is that first time. So um, I was very much before my solo, like, I'm ready, I'm ready, let me solo, I'm totally ready. And I was really grateful that my instructor gave me extra expertise, extra time, extra experience, because everything from my climb outs to my approach angles, everything in the aircraft changed. Uh, my sight picture changed, everything changed just due to the shift in weight and balance. So really profound um, experience. Um, another thing was on climb out, you probably noticed in the video I was fiddling with the timer. Uh, I didn't have the timer set before I took off for my uh, solo time. Uh, looking back on that, I probably didn't need to know. Uh, when I listened to the audio, uh, Garrett had actually taken a picture of the Hobbs, uh, my instructor had taken a picture of the Hobbs. I think it was more for my personal reference, but back to always fly the aircraft first. It was my first solo. I was literally on climb out on my first climb out, and I'm fiddling with the clock. You know, fly the aircraft first. Um, it's amazing the little things that will distract you. So, you know, probably wasn't an issue. I didn't have any problem setting the clock, but it was just kind of one of those distractions that probably I didn't need to be messing with right then and there. Um, one of the coolest things for me on my solo was when I came in for my final approach. I called for clearance and um, you know got approached straight to the ramp um, off the runway, kind of where we shoot our, our practice. And as I came around and I was coming in for my for my approach, uh, my instructor Garrett was standing in the field, like right at the end of my approach area. And I was actually shooting a little long and when I saw him there, I was like, boy, I better steepen up and, and really make sure I hit my spot. But it was really cool. Um, given the fact that my instructor had that much confidence in me. You know, he wasn't hiding behind some barrels in the corner of the uh, of the field. He was like right there in my landing zone, standing there. You know, we started the solo together, we ended it together. Um, and that was just, just really cool. Uh, the other thing was I've been having problems hovering over by the hangars, just getting in my head. And uh, when we came over to that, to that final uh, set down by the hangars, my family was there, I had the hangar there. Normally it'd be like, boy, this is a lot of distraction. I'd get up in my head. Um, but I really stuck the landing and, and was at, at ease just with my family there. And you can see my daughter going like, set it down, land it. And she's all excited. Um, just really a cool, cool day. So, you know, my takeaway was just lots of preparation and, and lots of getting ready for the solo. And then when it happens, I was so grateful to have that preparation because I was really at ease. I got to wave at my kids, um, you know, on an approach. I wasn't like panicked or stressed. Um, so really grateful for that extra time. And I was talking to 
several people soloed and they're always like, boy, we need, you know, I want a solo, I want a solo, and then everybody kind of feels I'm ready and that their instructor's holding them back. And I think just given the changes in dynamics, the amount of stress you're under, all of those things is really helpful. And I think that's the last piece was just don't get in your head. Um, I actually thought my instructor wasn't going to let me solo that day. Uh, going out and just doing pick up and set downs, I was all over the place. I was stressed out. I kind of felt like it was a test. We went out and did a little dual time together, and I really felt like it was a, a, a test. And if I didn't do perfect pick up and set downs, he wasn't going to let me fly, you know, solo. And kind of at the end, he's like, "Dude, you got to take a break. I'm going to fly for a bit, and uh, you got to get out of your head." And once I got out of my head. You know, just had a great, great day. It was just that, don't put that pressure on you. Go out and, and have fun. So, thanks for watching. Comments uh, at the bottom. Love to hear from you. Subscribe um, if you can. And, and thanks for all your support. And thanks for your feedback.